Hi, Jim Cameron here. I'm beaming in from Wellington, New Zealand, where I'm in post-production on Avatar 3. So hi to all of you there in Bristol for the Forbidden Worlds Film Festival, who've gathered for this screening in honor of my dear friend Stan Winston and his work on The Terminator. You know, The Terminator was my first film as director, and we didn't have much money, and I couldn't afford a top designer, so I just designed all the models and the effects myself because I was basically unemployed and I was the cheapest resource available. So I had all these drawings of the Terminator and his endoskeleton and all that, but nobody to build them. And my friend Rob Botin, famous makeup guy, wasn't available, but he recommended this guy named Stan Winston. He said, now, Stan's a little crazy and he'll try to push your buttons, you know, to test you. So I went and met Stan and I saw all the amazing designs that he'd done for Heartbeeps and Starman and his other early films. And Stan says to me, so why should I, Stan Winston, work on your crappy little movie? So I said, well, Rob says you're a whore and you'll take the money. So we stared at each other and then we both just cracked up, you know, until we were crying. And he hugged me and we were best friends ever since. You know, I loved Stan as my brother from another mother and his humor and his sense of fun and his practical jokes and all that were a big part of that. He took his work deadly seriously when it came to excellence, but he did it all with this amazing sense of fun and adventure. And we always just believed that we were doing something new and pioneering and that's what he lived for. You know, he so greatly respected art and artists. You know, he was a, an excellent artist himself and a gifted sculptor, but he celebrated the work of the artists who worked for him at his studio. He mentored them and he let them shine and he never tried to eclipse them. He was so proud of them. And that loyalty was returned in kind. The guys that came aboard for the Terminator, John Rosengrant, Shane Mahan, and Richard Landon, became his loyal, rock-steady core team on most of the Stan Winston Studios movies, the incredible work that they did over the next 20 years. Aliens, uh, Predator, and all its sequels, Terminator 2, Jurassic Park, and all those sequels, Edward Scissorhands, Iron Man, um, Avatar, and so on. Just incredible world-class work for which they won a handful of Oscars. You know, Stan and I work great together. We inspired each other and we learned from each other. And he could take my designs and make them better and figure out the hard part, how to bring them alive, you know, for me to shoot. And I still have his full-sized alien queen at my offices in LA, this stunning sculpture. So after the Terminator and Aliens, I trusted him and his team completely. By the time we got to T2, I just gave them free reign. And you know, it's hard to tell where his practical effects end and the CG begins in that movie. And at that time, we both saw the handwriting on the wall. The CG was here and it would revolutionize creature and character design. But Stan didn't resist it. He leaned into it. He had this vision of what the future could be. So we founded a new company together called Digital Domain to create digital characters. And to Stan, you know, it didn't matter whether it was rubber and hydraulics or whether it was computer generated. For him, it was just about the art, the design, the, the unfettered imagination of him and his artists. And Stan's team worked on the creatures for Avatar such as uh, the Dire Horse and the Viper Wolves and, and the others. And the, these designs would be executed entirely digitally. And they designed the faces and the bodies for Jake and Aetiri and, you know, all the rest of the characters. And he was so proud of those designs. But, you know, sadly, Stan never got to see them brought to life. Cancer took him away too young. You know, toward the end, I was told he was fading by John Rosengrant. So I called him up and he sounded quite chipper. So I said, Stan, we've done it. After all these years, Neytiri is alive. We've got the first handful of shots and it's totally working. 
It was literally our dream come true, full emotion and photorealism in a CG character. So he and I made plans for me to come to his house the next day to show him. And I went over with my laptop, but I was told he's not having a good day. I went back the next day, but he had passed that night, the night before. And it still breaks my heart that I wasn't able to share with Stan our dream come true. But to this day, I think there wouldn't have been an avatar or its sequels without that dream that Stan believed in so strongly. You know, I miss him, and as I carry on, I try to follow his example of celebrating and mentoring the artists that design all our amazing cinematic worlds and creatures and characters. It's what Stan taught us. So please enjoy this film. It stands in my first project together, the first of many.